Hey everyone, now we're going to look at the following dot point, analysing examples of non-equilibrium systems in terms of the effect of entropy and enthalpy, for example combustion and photosynthesis. So just before we move on to this uh, content area, we're going to have a look at the verb analyze. So when we're analyzing something, we're breaking down into components and we're also looking at the relationship between these components. So relationship between. So here we're looking at a non-equilibrium system and what entropy and enthalpy have to do with systems being non-equilibrium. We know, or we will know by the end of this video, that both combustion and photosynthesis are non-equilibrium uh, systems. And we're going to have a chat about Gibbs law and review how that works at this point. So if we look at Gibbs free energy, we know that delta G or changing Gibbs free energy is equal to the change in enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy. Not remember that a change in Gibbs free energy uh, below zero, so a value that gives us, um, or oh sorry, a enthalpy and entropy change at a particular temperature that gives us a negative result, is what we refer to as a spontaneous reaction. Whereas when we have a delta G or change in Gibbs free energy that is greater than zero, so we have a positive value, we know that that's a non-spontaneous reaction. And when we have a delta G that is equal to zero, then we say that that is actually an equilibrium system. So we're going to assume that um, combustion and photosynthesis fall into the first two categories. If we look at combustion reactions, we know that they are always exothermic. They will always release heat energy. So the delta H, the enthalpy for combustion reactions, for all combustion reactions is negative. Here we have an example of a combustion reaction. So we have ethane reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. And we want to look at the entropy of the system. So one really easy way of doing that is looking at the number of moles on either side of the reaction. So seven, uh, seven over two, we've got three and a half moles of oxygen and one mole of ethane reacting. So we've got 4.5 moles on the reactant side and we've got two and three moles of product. So we've got five in total. So if we have a look at the number of moles, it is increasing. And that is one of the ways that we can work out that the entropy of the system is increasing. So we're going to have a positive entropy value for this particular uh, combustion reaction. That is not to say that all combustion reactions have a positive entropy, uh, but certainly this one does. So if we have a look at the actual values for the combustion of ethane at 25 degrees Celsius, the enthalpy is indeed a negative value and the change in entropy is indeed a positive value. Now, if we go back and have a look at our equation, our change in Gibbs free energy is equal to the change in enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy. So before we even plug in any values, we know that the enthalpy is negative and that is going to be subtracted by a positive result, um, which is then going to overall, we can see, give us a negative value. So why don't you just take a moment now and complete the calculation yourself. Okay, so calculating the values that we've, or using the values that we've been given, we've calculated that the change in Gibbs free energy is negative 1,682.7 kilojoules per mole. Being that it's a negative value, this particular system is going to be spontaneous. Um, it's going to be spontaneous at all temperatures. The, the change in Gibbs free energy is quite high. So this is certainly not an equilibrium system. Let's take a look at the photosynthesis reaction where we've got 
carbon dioxide and water forming glucose and oxygen. We know that this is an endothermic reaction. So that means that we're going to have uh, energy absorbed by the system in order for reactants to form products. So the delta H is going to be greater than zero. It's going to be a positive value. If we have a look at the entropy of the system, we'll start by looking at the moles of the reactants where we've got 12 and the moles of the products where we've got seven. So that's another clear indication that the entropy of the system has decreased. So the delta S for this particular reaction is less than zero, it's a negative value. I don't actually have any values for you to work with for this particular uh, example, but if we have a look algebraically at our Gibbs free energy equation once again, where we've got our enthalpy subtracted by our temperature multiplied by our um, change in entropy, we've got a positive value for the enthalpy and we're going to minus whatever temperature this reaction occur is occurring at, let's assume at standard conditions, we've got photosynthesis um, occurring, so 298 um, kelvins, and it's going to have a negative entropy value. So those two negatives are going to become a positive, and it's really quite clear that the change in Gibbs free energy is going to end up with a positive value. So that is going to give us a very clear indication that the reaction is non-spontaneous, a positive change in Gibbs free energy value tells us that it is non-spontaneous and it's another example of a non-equilibrium system. So there you go, we've addressed those examples of uh, photosynthesis and combustion as non-equilibrium systems according to their enthalpy and entropy. Thanks for watching. Yep, cool.